I'm going to be talking today about security-driven development. Um, just going to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I am a husband and father. These are my two daughters here on the side. Victoria, my oldest daughter. This is actually her first ever B-Sides event. So let's give her let's give her a round of applause. I am also what my wife calls a fully realized nerd. Um, that means I like comic books, video games, board games, Marvel movies, DC movies, it doesn't matter. If it's something nerd related, I'm probably into it. As you can tell, I am wearing my Groot shirt today. I did have the debate of what watch to wear. I went with the Darth Vader watch because, well, they're all owned by the same company now anyway. I didn't feel right wearing my Superman watch. I've been around technology for 20 years now. I'm a little bit old. Um, I've been mostly focused in the software development realm, mostly around Ruby, Rails, software testing, things of that nature. And within the last couple of years, I've really kind of made the switch over to the information security side and mostly how those two realms, the software development and the information security realm, intertwine and how they come together. And that's kind of what this talk is going to be centered on today. Uh, my Twitter handle is right there. It's at our Ricker Jr. On Twitter, I'll have it up at the end. Um, feel free to hit me up there. I'm usually pretty active on there. So what is this talk all about? Well, security is a top concern. If you're on the internet, security should be a concern for you, right? If you put anything out on the internet, it, you should be worried about security. And as if you're a software developer, you have great power. You have the ability to create things that people use that make their lives better and simpler. And as the famous movie line goes, with great power comes great responsibility. If you're a software developer, not only do you have this great power, you also have the responsibility to make sure that your software is secure. The earlier a vulnerability can be detected, the better off everyone is. If you catch a vulnerability when the software is being tested, it's not going to have the impact on it that it would once the vulnerability hits production. Because once it hits the internet, once someone's able to find it and hit production, it can be exploited. I'm going to talk about three major things in this talk today. And I'm going to try to move quickly because I know I'm standing between you guys and food right now. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are at in terms of application security now, some tools that developers can use to test their applications for security, and then I'm going to talk about some actual actionable points that we can take coming out of here today to kind of bridge the gaps, if you will. So the real inspiration for this talk started when I stumbled upon this. This is the Rugged Software Ma Manifesto. I'm not going to take the time to read through this, you can Google this and find this out on the internet. But what this talks about is as being a software developer, we're not going to be a weakness. We're not going to be a weak point that can be exploited. And it talks about developing our software with that mentality in mind. It's built around not just focusing about getting the application out there, but making sure that it's secure in the process. Before I get into the tools and things here, I will, I will caveat this. Nothing I'm going to show you today is a silver bullet. There are no silver bullets when it comes to security. These are some good tools. These are imperfect tools. But these are tools that can help shore up weaknesses. But they're not end-all, be-all. You put these in, they're going to fix everything because they're not. This slide should look very familiar to a lot of people. This is the OWASP top 10 from five years ago. This is the OWASP top 10 from just a couple of years ago. What do we notice? There's not much difference. There's not much difference. We're still dealing with injection as number one in 2015, going into 2016. That's a problem. That's a problem. Application security, we're still dealing with most of the same vulnerabilities that we've been dealing with for the last five plus years. It's not changing. 
we're putting out software that is still exploitable to the same things as before. That's a problem. That's what's got to change. We're not going to solve, we're not going to find all the holes. We're not going to find all the problems with these tools that I'm going to talk about here today. But what we're going to talk about is we're going to eliminate most of the low hanging fruit. Because that's where a lot of these vulnerabilities come from that you see when people get hacked. It's not the big complicated vulnerabilities. It's the simple low hanging fruit that usually comes back to bite companies and developers. So first thing I'm going to talk about here is actually something called Rails Goat. Rails Goat is an intentionally vulnerable version of the Ruby on Rails framework. And it's designed to use for training and demonstration for de both developers and security people to find holes, to know what to look for, to be able to test and understand secure coding practices. I'm going to use Rails Goat. I'm going to try to squeeze one demo in in my time here, and I'm going to use Rails Goat, and I'm going to use Rails Goat with the first tool that I'm going to talk about, which is the Breakman Scanner. Breakman looks at your code for vulnerabilities. It only knows your code, and it's used by a number of companies, GitHub, New Relic, Twitter, amongst others. It is a Rails security scanner. Its focus is Rails. It works with Jenkins and Hudson Continuous Integration Tools so it can be merged into your existing testing environment. If you're using Ruby, if you're using Rails, it can be plugged in there. It tests for a wide range of vulnerabilities, not limited to, but including that OWASP top 10. So it will check your code to make sure that you're not pushing out code that has vulnerabilities specifically in OWASP top 10. And there is, it's a, while it's an open source project, there is a pro version it's launching this year. It's in beta. I would encourage you, if you're in Rails, if you're in Ruby, take a look at it. Take a look at it and take a look at the pro version and help with the beta. I'm all about practicing what I preach, if you will. I'm currently helping out with the beta right now myself. So, Breakman will test your code, but it's not perfect. Breakman has its flaws. It will go false positive. Breakman tends to lean more on the suspicious side. It's going to be more wary of different things that you have going on in your application. It's going to lean towards suspicious. Personally, I like that. I would rather be more suspicious and not miss something than be like, you know what, that's probably fine. That's probably... That's probably, that person belongs here, I'm sure. They're just walking around here. I would rather be more suspicious than be more trusting. It doesn't work well with unusual configurations. It only works with what it considers a normal Rails configuration. So if you have anything weird or unusual in there, it's not going to know a whole lot about that. It only knows your code. It doesn't know everything else centered around your application. It only knows the code that you run through it through the rails. Like I said, it's a rail security scanner. And it isn't omniscient. It doesn't know everything you're trying to do with your application. It's only going in there and trying to test for the specific vulnerabilities there. It doesn't know what you're trying to accomplish with your application or anything like that. It's not omniscient. It does not know everything. All right, so I'm going to try a demo here. We'll see how this goes. All right, as you can see, nope, no one can see that.
There we go, yay. All right, as you can see, I'm in my Rails Goat directory here, and Breakman's really simple to run. After you install it, just type Breakman O, and I'm going to tell it what file I want it to go to. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up that the time on your computer is not correct, so it's actually like 7 till, just so you know there's a lot of people that right. to come in. All right, that's fine. Thank you. All right. I'm going to tell it to go to this test.html file. And it's going to run here on the screen. Maybe. It's detected that it's a Rails 3 application and it's going through all of its templates and its controllers and it's running through everything and now it's done. So I'm going to go over here to my directory and open up the test.html file. Again, maybe. Right, and it gives you this nice, neat looking report. It tells you all of the checks that it performed, everything that it looked for, and then it gives you those results. It check, tells you where it checked, and it tells you what warnings it found, and where it found those warnings to at. So you can see where it found it in the controllers, and where at. And also, this is cool right here, say you don't, you don't know what that is, if you're on the, hooked on the internet, I'm not on the Wi-Fi right now. You click on this warning type, it will launch a page that explains in detail what that vulnerability is and how it can be fixed. All right. Next tool I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about Gauntlet. Now Gauntlet runs off the philosophy of be mean to your code. And it runs tests based on any number of security tools that you want to talk about. It get, you can use nmap, you can use SQL map, you can use, it even has a heart bleed test. You can use the Arachne web, web scanner. The great thing about this is it's built on top of Cucumber. So you write your test in the same language, in the same format that you do your normal Cucumber test. You write it in the Gherkin format. So it's that same easy to read format. Because it's on Cucumber, like Breakman, it can plug right into your existing testing framework. If you're using Cucumber or some variant of Cucumber, it can plug right in there. It comes, if you use the Quick Start Kit, there's a Quick Start Kit that you can install. It comes with all of those adapters pre-installed. If you just do the gem install gauntlet, you will have to install all of those um, tools that I adapters that I indicated earlier because it doesn't come with that. But there is a quick start kit that you can download and install. It doesn't have the nice little report that um, Breakman had. It uses the Unix standard error and out to pass status. So you're not going to get the nice clean report. But you're going to be able to test for a lot more in-depth things. I'm going to move kind of quickly through here, but this is a screenshot. You know, I mean, just like with everything else, you can type gauntlet-help, and it will break down all of the commands and switches and things that you can use with gauntlet. This is kind of just a brief screenshot. I ran gauntlet against that same Rails Goat application that I did before, and it tells you 
just like with any other test, you can see where it failed, where it pat, where it hiccuped at, and where it passed. And then it tells you at the end, this is how many failed, this is how many we skipped, this is how many passed. It gives you this in this format so you can see relatively quickly where your, where your tests are failing. Another one that I'm going to talk about, because I've talked about Ruby a lot, so I'm going to move on to some other languages here. Mitten. It's put out by a company called F-Secure, and it was actually ins inspired by Gauntlet. And it's for use with Python, and it uses Python's behavior-driven development tool called Behave. Tests are still written in Gherkin, and it works with the burp suite, for tests for web for um, running security tests against web applications. <laughs> BDD Security. This one is put out by Continuum Security, and it uses Java and Ant, Apache Ant, to run, and it focuses on the idea of the evil user. Right? We have all these user tests. And it focuses on the idea of an evil user. And tests are exposed to all levels and can be run at a moment's notice. We'll talk a little bit about OWASP here, OWASP Open Web Application Security Project. All fairly familiar with OWASP. There's no commercial products with them, that's part of why I like them. Everything is free and open source, and it's driven to make security visible and accessible. They have a couple of tools. I'm not going to get a chance to do the second demo that I wanted to do. OWASP Zap. It's an integrated penetration testing tool to find vulnerabilities in web applications. You can run it as a standalone tool, or you can use it as part of your testing setup. It can be included in your testing setup, or you can run it as standalone. And this is one of the flagship projects for OWASP and is very well maintained and documented. And I say that because a lot of times when we get into open source projects, there's not a lot of documentation, it's not maintained. OWASP, especially their flagship programs, are well documented and well maintained and constantly being changed and updated and enhanced. Not going to do the demo. OWASP Offensive Web Testing Framework or OWTF, one of my favorite ac one of my one of my one of my favorite acronyms ever. OWTF. It's aligned with the OWASP testing guide and the penetration penetration testing execution standard. This is designed to be a fully functional penetration testing tool. It's more efficient and comprehensive, and it's more creative because. It, it wants you to try to find new and creative ways of testing your software. It doesn't want you to focus on just the same old, same old. It wants you to be creative. It wants this to be fun, as much as trying to find vulnerabilities in web applications can be fun. This is just a little screenshot of what this looks like. You know, you're, it runs all of these things here. I'm going to try to get out of the way so you guys can see it here. And it t shows you everything that it's running and everything here. But the cool thing about this tool, the thing, that, the thing that I like most about this, is there is a web version. You can actually go on the web, plug in your URL, and it will spit out results right there on the web page. If you go to the OWASP OWTF web page, there's actually a link to run this in your browser. You can look and see what vulnerabilities your site and your application has right from your browser. Yo. Is that baked into Kali yet? Or do you have to install it? I'm not 100% sure. I, I believe you still have to install it in Kali. I could be wrong on that, but I believe you still have to install it. All right. So what's next? One thing is, is I think we need to make our developers aware and educate them that these tools exist. Because testing is a big thing in the software development community. 
we need to start thinking just like the OWTF said, or about the BDE said, was about the evil user, right? I love this concept of an evil user because the thing is, is we're testing for everything else. We're testing to make sure that everything works like it's supposed to. We're testing to make sure that no one can do things that they shouldn't be able to do. Why shouldn't we build tests to focus on the evil user, people that are going to try to exploit our applications? No one cares if your software is secure if it doesn't work. And no one cares if your software works if it's not secure. No, they don't care. You, there needs to be a balance created between working applications and secure applications. We need to encourage creativity. Put yourself in the shoes of an attacker. One of the first guys I met when I got into information security gave me this idea of a composite attacker. Someone whose job it is is to think of all the ways that you're not thinking about to break into your organization or break into your application. We need to start thinking like that because I guarantee you if you build an application, if you put something out on the internet, people are going to try to break it. Don't let speed cause you to sacrifice security. Kind of alluded to that at the beginning. Don't be so focused on getting there first that you don't get there, that you get there first and you're the first one that gets popped. Contribute to your open source security projects. Breakland, Gauntlet, OWASP. Be active in your developer communities and in your security communities. I made a list here. Now granted, I'm from Columbus. When I first gave this talk was in Columbus. So that's why there's a lot of Columbus groups on here. My personal favorite is name, at least, of an organization is Security MBA. Security MBA stands for Security Masters of Beer Appreciation. We have OWASP, we have Ruby, we have Python, we have Windows. But you guys here in Cleveland have all of that too. You guys have Clevesec. You guys have OWASP Cleveland, the Northeast Ohio ISSA. You guys have .NET, Python, and Ruby user groups here in town. If you're a security person, go to the developer groups. If you're a developer, go to the security groups. There needs to be a bridge built. Going back to Jack's keynote, I, I, I kind of smiled a little bit during his keynote. I'm like, hey, that's the exact points I'm trying to make. <laughs> We need to build a bridge between the security professionals and the developers. We shouldn't have 100 people at the Ruby user group and six people at the OWASP user group. There needs to be no more echo chambers because when people start working together across these silos, that's when we start building better tools and getting more secure. In closing, live long and prosper. Thank you guys for, for going lunch a little bit to listen to me talk and enjoy the rest of your guys' day here at B-Sides Cleveland. Thank you.